Welcome to C3 Fort Worth Online. We're excited to have you with us and we're praying that you see Jesus like never before today. If you're joining us for the first, second, third time or just searching for a community, we'd love to hear from you and hear about your story. So please click the connect button on the page and we'll be in touch. At C3, we're one of the friendliest churches in all of Fort Worth. We love to talk, we love to chat with each other. So right now, just like if we were in service, Post a message in chat to one of your friends. Reach out to a friend. Invite them along. Uh, take a few minutes to do that, and then let's get ready to worship. Hey, everyone. It's Will and Claire. We miss you. We love you. It's been so fun to see your faces just in little bits and pieces and all of these videos every week and virtual dinner parties and yeah. just all the little things. Yeah, we do miss everyone. And check in on someone this week and jump in a dinner party. We want to see your, all, all your faces. Yeah, we love you. See ya. Hey, guys. It's Shane, Maxwell, and Talisha here. We really miss everyone and can't wait to see you guys. Hey, we are praying for our C3 family. We cannot wait to be back in one place to worship again. Um, Shane and I have just been taking this one day at a time, so we just want to remind you guys to do the same. It will be a matter of time. Our God is bigger than this. So again, we will be back together hugging each other, and I can't wait. So we'll see y'all. Bye. Bye. Hey, C3 fam, this is Mary. Um, miss you guys so much. It's a strange new world we live in, but uh, we're making the most of it. Just wanted to say that I miss you guys, and uh, today's going to be a great day, great service. Uh, tune in, get connected, reach out, um, talk to somebody you haven't talked to in a while. Hey guys, it's Hector and Megan. Uh, we just want to say first and foremost how much we miss y'all. We can't wait to see you. We're looking forward to getting back to our routine of going to church and um, being with each and every one of you. Uh, definitely during this time, if you need us for any support, please feel free that you can reach out. Um, if you feel more comfortable reaching out to Pastor Brandon or Pastor Mayor, definitely do that. Um, but we would love to hear from you, and we can't wait to see you. Bye, right, guys. Hey, C3. Hey, guys. We love you all. Man, we miss you guys. Uh, it has been too long. A lot of things have changed. I mean, I've got this all this gray in my beard, and we've got this homeschool set up, and we got the teacher's desk right over there. and. We just miss y'all. We've been praying for you, uh, and we can't wait to get together again in person. But until then, we will see you online, on Zoom calls, all that good stuff. We love you guys, and see you soon.
Jesus. Oh, heart, believe. Let faith rise up in me. Let faith rise up. Oh, heart, believe. Let faith rise up in me. Let faith rise up, oh heart, believe. Let faith rise up in me. Let faith rise up, oh heart, believe. Let faith rise up in me.
rise up within us during this time, a time where fear may try to creep in during this um, period of unknown, where there's chaos around us. Um, let us not fear, but let us cling to your hope, God. Let us cling to your peace, God, your peace that stills the waves, God, your peace that calms the storm, God. Lord, we ask, Father God, that you calm the storm in each one of our lives, Father God. Lord, we ask for your protection and your provision, God, during this time, Lord, where it may seem um, dark, where it may seem impossible um, to get to the next day, God. Lord, I ask, Father God, for your peace to still that, Lord, that we just um, cling to your hope and that we know that you work all things together for good, God. And so, Lord, we thank you, Father God. We praise you during this time, knowing that you will provide for us, knowing that you are going to protect us during this storm, God. It's in your name. Amen. Amen. What an amazing time in worship. Thank you, team. Yeah. It's so important during this time that we stay in community. Yep. And so we have a few ways that you can do that. Yep. Um, you can follow us on our social platforms yep. at C3 Fort Worth on Twitter, yep. Instagram, and Facebook. Yeah. And we also are still having virtual dinner parties. Yeah. They are seriously one of our favorite times of the week. Yep. Um, we gather on a Zoom call. Yep. It's just like being yeah. in a house, but it's on the Zoom. I love technology. Yes. You know, yes, so we send out those links every Wednesday. Uh, you can text dinner parties to 555-888. Uh, you can also jump in with your friends and they will be listed on Wednesdays uh, or DM us on Instagram on social media at C3 Fort Worth again. Um, like I said, we love dinner parties. We love community. Uh, so it's a time to share a meal, share a story and to see Jesus. So at this time, we're going to transition into a time of giving. Uh, there's a few ways that you can give. Uh, there's online and text messages. Uh, you'll see those links on the screen. Yeah. Um, also, we want to highlight that over the last couple of weeks, we've been doing the uh, For the Streets offering. Um, yeah. We've fed some frontline workers. Uh, we've helped out some different um, community outreach uh, programs. We have added funds to what they are doing, uh, feeding families that have you know lost income during this time. Uh, we've raised over $4,000 and we're not even done yet. Uh, we've got one right now that's going to end today uh, that you can still get involved in. And then we're going to start a new one beginning this upcoming week. Um, it's going to be there. Like I said, it's been ways that we can practically reach the city and it's stuff that we can do where we're at with what we have. Um, right now, during this time of giving, um, I wanted to highlight a quick verse. It's something we've talked about um, over these times of the patterns of withdrawal and return and everything like that, and then the, the temple to table. Um, it's Acts 2.45. In that verse, it talks about that everybody pulled their possessions together, and they made sure that everyone's needs were met. And right now, during this time, that's what it's all about. Uh, myself, I'm working just like I would be working without all the... the pandemic chaos going on. Um, I just don't have customers coming in the lobby. So for me, the day-to-day the -day looks very similar. In fact, I'm being blessed with more work. So like this is an opportunity for me to be able to give. Um, and for people like that in, in C3 Fort Worth, that's what they're able to do. But there's other people that need to have their, you know, they've, they've lost jobs. They're in an industry where they can't work. Yeah. Um, they're, you know, there's all these different things. And there's people in our cities, our neighbors, there's people on our streets that, that need something. And this is our time uh, as C3 Fort Worth, but as the church, the local church, to be able to step up and to give and to help out. So this is our opportunity to do that, and we want to be able to be that that blessing to people and to be Jesus to the people that we see around us. So let me pray real quick, and then we'll go into that. God, we thank you for this time. We thank yeah. you for this opportunity. Lord, we ask that you would use these funds, you would multiply them, and you would yes. spread them far and wide across this city, across our neighborhoods, and across everywhere that needs them, God. We thank you and praise you for this time. We ask that you would bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, C3 Fort Worth. So good to have you. If you're new with us, we're so glad you're part of this today. And uh, we can't wait to meet you in person. But even now, we can meet you uh, in different ways. We'd love to hear your story, connect with you. So uh, I know someone's already mentioned that, but I'd love for you to hit that connect button. And uh, we'd love to, to meet you and hear your story and do life with you as best we can in this season. Uh, but hey, I, I love you, church. Uh, we can't wait to see you again. Uh, my name is Brandon. My wife and I pastor C3 Fort Worth, and our heart is for the streets and hearts of our city. We want people to see Jesus like never before, and we hope that that's happening for you, even in this 
uh, season of challenge and difficulty. And uh, we're starting a new pattern today called Wind and Waves. We're in a year of a pattern. Uh, we're going to do what Jesus did and become like Jesus. Uh, we, we realize that the patterns of our life don't fill the space, but they create the space. And so we want to create patterns that create a space where we can see Jesus, where we can experience the presence of God. And, and if we can establish right patterns, then we can adjust our posture, especially in moments like this, and we can begin to inhabit places wherever we go, whoever we are, uh, like Jesus did. And that's our hope. That's our desire. And uh, so I'm glad you're here. If you're new with us, super glad you're here. And, and church, we love you. We can't wait to see you again. I, I do want to give um, just a quick shout out to a couple things. One is to you. Uh, in the last three weeks, we've raised $4,000 for the net uh, to provide groceries for over six weeks for multiple families. Uh, last week, we uh, partnered with Roots and Funky, uh, Funky Picnic Brewery uh, to provide breakfast burritos and coffee for frontline workers. And then, uh, the, or, sorry, and then the, this just this past week, uh, Safe Haven Domestic Abuse uh, Center that takes in children and, and, and families that are dealing with domestic abuse, which right now is a major, major concern. Uh, we were able to provide financially for them. Uh, and so $4,000 in just over three weeks, just unbelievable. Thank you for your generosity. And then second thing is, uh, man, our ladies just had a Friday night hangout uh, online, Ladies Night In. Uh, Pastor Mayor bringing an amazing word. I'm going to have to make sure she's doing a Sunday morning really, really soon. Uh, just an incredible word. I snuck on and listened to that portion, but there's a lot happening. And 60 ladies, 60 women jumped on. Unbelievable. So we know things are still happening. Even in all of that we're having to adjust and, and change for, things are still happening. People are being encouraged. Community is happening. And Jesus is being seen like never before. And thank you to all of you uh, on our teams, uh, creative guys, all of you guys who are working really hard to to kind of shift focus and get the online stuff going and everything else. It's big props to you. So if you know one of our creative team or one of our admin team, whatever, man, please tell them thank you because they have worked really, really hard. Uh, we are in this wind and waves pattern. We're just starting it today. We're just in a couple weeks because there's two big stories where Jesus is in the wind and waves. And we wanted to know what happens when you're in a storm, a storm maybe you weren't expecting. Uh, and what do you do? What do you do in that moment? What, how do you handle the ups and downs that waves bring? And how do you handle this instability of it all? How do you deal with the storm? I feel like we're in a bit of a global storm, not only just in our country, but around the world. People are dealing with something that maybe we didn't see coming or when we did, we saw it too late, or whatever the case might be, uh, we are in a situation where whether it be financially or in our health, uh, or just even in the adjustments we're having to make with our routines uh, that are, it's jarring. It's, it's, it's whoa, wh what's going on? And, and what do we do in that moment? And so we wanted to take two big stories, one where Jesus is in the boat with his disciples and the other where he walks on the water to his disciples in the boat. And what happens in those moments? How does Jesus deal with it? How did the disciples deal with it? Uh, what do we do in the storms of life? And so we want to talk through that. What is the pattern? What is the thing that we do when the storms Come, so let me read this to you out of Mark chapter 4, verse 35. It says, As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's cross to the other side of the lake. Simple instruction. Sometimes the simplest instructions from the Lord lead us into situations that will challenge who we are and what we trust in. And so they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind. Although the other boats followed, Jesus just could not get away. He had just done uh, an amazing job teaching people and healing people. And man, people wanted more and more and more of Jesus. And I'm hoping in this moment in our culture that people are wanting more and more and more of Jesus, that they're realizing in where, as everything else falls, Jesus will rise. But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat and it began to fill with water. Man, I don't know if you've ever been in a boat, but if, I, if you're in a boat and water begins to fill the boat, you probably begin to worry. I, that's just my guess. For some of you, maybe you're just used to it. Uh, but the water beginning to fill the boat means that my heart's beginning to fill with fear, right? I'm immediately getting anxious and worried and trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, and that's what happens for many of us. When the storm comes and things hit and it just feels like everything's filling up, Man, that's when my heart, my mind, everything gets anxious, worrisome. I, I begin to get filled with fear and worry and what's happening. And, and now I remind you, uh, the disciples are not rookies. They're not, they're not, this is not, they didn't just get drafted, right? Like they'd been in the water before. They, they had been pulled from by Jesus. They would become followers of Jesus after being fishermen. So they knew the terrain. They understood 
the situation. They knew what was going on. So for the disciples that we see here in just a moment, for them to be getting scared and worried and fearful means that this had to be something real. This had to be something that actually was concerning. And for many of us, we might have dealt with some storms in the past, but right now what's happening, it's shaking us in ways we didn't expect. And and, and I was reading uh, one of my favorite authors lately, his name's Mark Sayers, and he, he speaks to this idea that for many of us, we just haven't had to fight something like this before. Whether it be the pandemic of fear or whether it be the actual pandemic of COVID, coronavirus, and all that it brings, whether it be financial, whatever, that, that we haven't had to deal with something like this before. He actually says it like this. He says, our lack of hardship weakens our resilience. We are born for struggle, not to struggle, but born for struggle, created for a cause, formed for a great battle. However, in the West, she being the church, she has been away from battle for too long. Not only has she forgotten how to fight, but she's forgotten that she's in a fight. I think that's what's happening. For many of us, we're in this fight of faith. Now, I remind you that the faith, the, the, I'm sorry, the fight is not one of flesh and blood. That's what uh, we hear from Paul. This is not a flesh and blood fight. This is a, a fight of faith, hope, and love. This is a fight of love in spite of, of hatred. This is a fight of faith in spite of fear. This is a spite of hope in, in, fight of, in spite of despair. This is a fight of us saying, no, we got power and sound mind. We, we, this is a fight that says we're going to serve instead of try to dominate in this moment. We, this is a different kind of fight. This is is not one where we're trying to win uh, by throwing nice punches. This is one where we're trying to push back the enemy and bring heaven into earth. But for some of us, we've, we've grown comfortable or, or we've gotten used to things as they are. And, and maybe this moment is revealing some things. And, and that's something for us to learn. Storms often reveal who we are right? Crises reveal who we are. They don't form who we are, although on the other side of this, we will have learned some things and probably been shaped in some ways. But in this moment, what's being revealed is who we already were. What's being revealed is what we already believed in. Matthew 7, Jesus says this, right? Jesus says, hey, if you listen to my words and build upon what I'm teaching you, then you will be like a house built upon a rock. And when the storm comes and the wind blows, your house will not fall. So what does a storm do? A storm reveals the foundation of your life. There is no way around it. A storm reveals what you trust in most. And so much of what we've trusted in as a culture, so much of what we've trusted in in Western culture, and really as people, so much of what we've trusted in has being tested right now. So much of what we've trusted has being, is being shaken at this very moment. The storms come into our world and they reveal, even for experienced fishermen who've done this before, who've sailed this route before, they're being shaken. They're, they're, they're having to remember that there's a fight here, that there's something to do. And when we deny that there's a storm, when we deny that we actually have struggle, we actually surrender our strength. What do I mean by that? Well, 2 Corinthians 12 says that it is in our weakness that his strength is made perfect. See, we're not in the denial business. We as Christians are not people who go, well, no, it's not happening. We're saying in spite of it happening, there is a strength that is greater. There is a, there is a, a Savior that who is stronger. There is a God that is above it all. And so for many of us, when we try to deny our struggle, when we try to be dishonest or try to put on a brave face and not be honest about where we're at or what we're dealing with or lament or being just like the psalmist, God, when are you going to turn to me? When we're dishonest about it, instead of like the psalmist, we actually are denying the strength that God wants to give. It's in these moments that we begin to actually go to the Lord and go, God, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I trust you. And that's when strength begins to be revealed. We actually find our strength in those moments. We, we begin to renew our strength. In fact, 1 Peter 1, 6 through 7 says, You rejoice in this, talking about trials, even though now for a short time, if necessary, you suffer grief in various trials, so that the proven character of your faith, more valuable than gold, may result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. I think this, I believe this, and I'm praying this, that even as we go through this storm as the church, our faith would be proven more valuable than gold. 
our faith, our confidence in him would be proven more valuable than gold. That even in the refining, we would be found resilient. That even as we, and that's the whole point of Mark Sayers. He's not trying to get onto us. He's just simply trying to say that for some of us, we haven't lifted weight in a while. And so when we get under the bar, when we pick up the weight, all of a sudden we're going, whoa, I haven't felt that in a while. And for some of us, that's what's happening. We're beginning to remember that, oh, there's a strength that we need to tap into. There's a, there's a strength that we need to lean into. There, there's something more than just what we can create ourselves. And it's important for our faith to be tested because a faith that is not tested most often cannot be trusted. And for some of us, we're going to come out of this season and our faith, we're going to trust our Lord in ways we never have before. But here's what's funny, right? This is what happens just a little bit after these storms begin to come. Verse 38, Jesus, this is, I love this. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. So the storm's happening, the disciples are freaking out, and Jesus is asleep. I don't know about you, maybe you got a friend like this, maybe you need to text them right now when I begin to explain this to you, uh, but we got, I got friends who can sleep in any position at any time. One of them is probably watching right now. His name is Scott Tresky. I've been a friend of his since seventh grade. He's a big part of our church. He's that man does so many amazing things. So I'm not getting on to him. I'm just telling you, he can sleep anywhere at any time. I mean, there'll be times where we'll be hanging out uh, and, and a lot going on. And then you look over and he's gone and his head sideways. He might as well be upside down. He's out. And maybe you got a friend like that, family, family member like that. I don't know. Jesus is doing that. Jesus, I guess could sleep. And, and here's the thing about Jesus. In this moment, he's just done amazing ministry. There's literally boats following them. Uh, he, he knows that people are plotting against his life. He could have been doing a lot of other things besides sleeping, right? They could have been doing a lot of other things beyond just sleeping. Uh, but he was sleeping. And I love that about Jesus. He just doesn't let other things get to him so much. But he's sleeping in the middle of a storm. What is going on? Now, I don't know if he's doing like what parents do when kids bust into your room way too early in the morning and pretend like you're asleep until hopefully they begin to go back to wherever they came from. You know, I don't know if it's that kind of thing or, and he's just testing to see what's going to happen with these disciples or if he's out like full on asleep. I don't, I don't know. I just know that they find him sleeping. I think it's interesting to me. But I think it's, it's, it's important for us to remember that Jesus is human divine and yet human. And this is where his humanity comes out. Long day of ministry, wiped out. The disciples are sailing. He's going to take a nap. Cool. And he does. And in the middle of a storm, he is asleep. Pastor Phil Pringle says this about Jesus being asleep. And he says it to us, really. Uh, he says, God sleeps so we will wake up. Awake to what? Well, to who we are and what we have. We have lived under, lived under wilderness conditions for too long. Wilderness conditions is where we expect God to do it all, to make water pour from a rock, like in the Old Testament, provide bread and meat from heaven, cover us from heat in the day with a cloud, and warm us with a pillar of fire at night. That's in the, uh, the exodus of the people of Israel. However, God is unwilling for us to stay in this position where he does it all. He intends that we'll begin to rule in life, taking charge over our circumstances. We're the ones meant to be slaying the giants, not God. He'll help. He'll move in our moving. But he's trying to get you and I to discover the power he's put in us. Sometimes God seems asleep, completely ignoring our prayers. Why? He's drawing up from within us our birthright to be ruling in life. Remember, we talk about this in Genesis 1. God says that you would rule and reign. Well, what does he mean? He means that we would be responsible for cultivating the earth and bringing all that he intended into the earth to bring life and hope out of all that he's already placed in the ground. There's something about him being asleep that should, and the disciples go, wait, he's still here. He hasn't bailed. He hasn't like walked on water away from the boat. He's still here with us. And they find him asleep and they wake him up and they say to him, hey, are you not noticing? Like, do you not care? Do you not care that the waves are about to kill us, that we are in danger? Do you not actually care about us? And I don't know if at some point in this journey over the last several weeks, if you have felt that, if in fact you have actually prayed that prayer, God, do you not care? Do you not care that people are dying? Do you not care that I'm in financial stress? Do you not care that my family member is sick? Do you not care that this is all happening? Do you not care? And sometimes in moments like this, in crises like this, that's what prayer looks like. 
fact, I, I had a, I read a story as I was preparing for this and uh, someone asked their friend, hey, how are you doing today? And the friend replied, well, I had to wake him up. I love that. It's not, it's not, well, I'm doing well, or right, things are okay, or I'm getting through. No, I had to wake Jesus up today. Uh, obviously, a play on words, but the idea being that, hey, listen, sometimes, sometimes that's the way it feels, right? Man, I got to wake up. Is he sleeping on us right now? Like, is he out? Like, is he, is he, does he have his pillow and he's in the back of the boat while this storm is raging? I, I want you to understand something about this. Jesus is in the boat. It, it's not as though Jesus has said, no, I don't, I don't have to deal with this. Now, Jesus is in the boat, in the midst of the storm. So while he may or may not be sleeping, Jesus is experiencing it. Jesus is present, and Jesus is about to make, up, uh, make a show of what's going on. He's, he's about to do something really amazing. But this is, at times, the honest estimation of our prayer life. It, there, there's, for some of us, that is the question. Do you, do you care? And, and for some of us, we can look at, uh, the disciples would go, wow, they, they really missed it on this one. They could have been, you know, hey, that's not really much of a thing to say to Jesus at this point. And, and one, can, one commentary says, one can fault their faith, but to whom did they come when the storm came? And so sometimes our prayers don't sound perfect, and sometimes our attitudes aren't even great, but, but where do we turn? And that's, that's the big deal. What's the turn? What's the move? When, when things hit, when storms show up, where... Where do we turn? What do we trust in? What's the foundation? Where are we building our house? What is the storm revealing? What are we finding out about ourselves in this moment? Ian Bounds says this, Every movement for the advancement of the gospel must be created by and inspired by prayer. Every movement for the advance, advancement of the gospel must be created by and inspired by prayer. And sometimes prayer looks like this, but I want to challenge you just real quickly. I want to challenge you as the church. Listen, let's be people of prayer. Let us let one of the foundations of our life be that we pray, that we trust God, that we have confidence in him, that we are praying over people, praying over the scenario, praying over situations, not, not acting as though it's the biggest thing ever and act, not acting as though it's the smallest thing ever, but being people who in the midst of it, having empathy, but also understanding we have power and a responsibility as people of God to pray and to seek the Lord and to pray on behalf of of this earth and be, pray on the behalf of people that God would turn some things around, that God would shift things, that God would begin to push back. And even if we have to come to the Lord and it starts with, do you not care and feel like we're waking him up? And Jesus wakes up. Jesus stands up and says, peace, be still. Peace, be still. Other translations say, hush, <laughs> be quiet. Almost as though he's trying to quiet down children, right? Hey, shh. Peace. Be silent. Be still. And for many of us, that's what peace looks like. Peace is silence. Not necessarily outwardly, but inwardly. Peace is that silence on the inside of us that isn't riled up and isn't going crazy and, and sounding the alarm every two seconds, but it's that quiet, still soul, that even in the midst of challenges and circumstances that we've never faced, we have peace. In fact, I think every storm or every situation that Jesus teaches about, including Matthew 7, talking about uh, when the storm comes and uh, even watching Jesus in the boat, the, the, the idea that storms wouldn't come was never part of the story. The storm was always going to come. There were always going to be storms in our life. In fact, he says to his disciples in John chapter 14, he says, I am leaving you with a gift. Oh, I love the phrasing. I'm leaving with you a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give you is a gift the world cannot give. So do not be troubled. Do not be afraid. See, I think for many of us, our view of what made us comfortable, our view of what made life good is going to shift drastically. I'm not saying that it will never look like it was or anything like that. I'm just simply saying that what we put our trust in is always going to be hard for us to say, well, oh yeah, it's all good now. The, the, the kind of peace that God wants to give isn't dependent upon your circumstance or situation. It's not dependent on what's going on around you. So no matter what goes on, there is a gift, peace of mind, peace of heart that the world cannot give, only Jesus can give. He says in John 16, to the same disciples, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will, that's a promise, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart. 
because I have overcome the world. So just after Jesus says, peace, be still, be quiet, still the waves, be silent. Just after he begins to take circumstances under his strength and power, he looks to the disciples. And I don't think he does this in an angry way. He might be a little bit frustrated, but he's asked these two questions to the disciples that I think for many of us, maybe we need to ask of ourselves, but Jesus looks at them and says this. He says, why are you still afraid? Where is your faith? Why are you still afraid and where is your faith? He, he, he's asking him this because just back there on the shore when they were doing all the miracles and hearing all the teaching and everything was going on, man, they were shouting, hooting, hollering. Everything was good. They were excited. They were ready to go to the next city and do the same thing. But between this city and that city or this shoreline and that shoreline was the sea. Right? And they get in the boat, the storm comes, and somewhere between places, somewhere between that shoreline and that shoreline, their faith gets mis dislocated. Their faith moves on to another place. I, I love the, the phrasing, where is your faith? Not as though it doesn't exist, but it's been misplaced. And when we misplace our faith, fear takes its place. When, when faith gets misplaced, fear takes its place. Fear tries to step in and fear begins to tell you all the things that are going to go wrong. See, faith and fear are very similar. They both believe that what you cannot see will come to pass. They both believe that what you cannot see will come to pass. And, and when you misplace your faith and put it in the wrong things and put it in things that you cannot trust, put it in things that will not stay strong for you, then fear begins to creep in. And Jesus is asking them, hey, where did you put your faith? Because you need to find it again. Because I'm still here. The storm has not made me leave. The storm has not scared me. The storm has not chased me off. I'm right here. You can trust in me. In fact, one way to ask the question, where is your faith, is to ask the question, where is your confidence? Where is your confidence? Why are you not confident in me? In fact, here, here's, here's a, this will jab you a little bit. Why is your confidence more in the storm than in your Savior? Why is the confidence more that the storm will overtake you than, than, than the Savior will stand with you? Why is your confidence in the storm surrounding you than in the Savior that is in the boat with you? Why? Where, where did you put your confidence? Because I want you to put it in me. He's not trying to get on to them to condemn them. He's trying to get on. He's saying, hey, Put your confidence back in me. You've seen what I can do. We've got more to do. This storm is not going to win. This storm is not going to be the end. This storm is not going to stop everything. Put your confidence back in me. And how do we do that? Well, we have to look at Jesus. See, see, fear will obsess over the ocean. Fear will obsess over the sea. Fear will obsess over the storm. Faith will keep its eyes on Jesus. Faith will be built up in Christ. Faith will obsess over who God is and who he said he is. In fact, the writer of Hebrews says it like this. Hebrews 12 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates. Come on, you need your faith initiated. Put your eyes on Jesus and perfects our faith. You need your faith to grow to maturity. Put your eyes on Jesus because of the joy awaiting him. He endured the cross. If you look upon Jesus and all that he endured, you will not grow weary. See, the greatest fight you will have in this moment is where your attention goes. The fight of your life right now is the fight for your attention. Where will you put your eyes? Where will you put your heart? Where will you put your mind? Where will you focus? Because that will either grow your faith or it'll grow your fear. Where are you putting your eyes today? Where are you putting your eyes looking upon Jesus? One commentator said it this way as I was studying for this, says no danger can come so near that God is not nearer. There's nothing so dangerous that can get so close to you that God is not closer. And we tend to forget in the story sometimes, the disciples maybe forgot for a moment that Jesus was in the boat with them. Jesus was there, even in the wind and waves. Jesus was there. Now, I, I want to just take a, 
jump here for this and I it's just kind of move beyond just what happened in the wind and waves. Jesus is present. You need to know that. Uh, Jesus has a destination. You need to know that. Jesus is going to make things happen. You need to know that. And Jesus can, even in the moments where he feels like, or you feel like he's asleep, is ready to respond when you and I come close, when you and I begin to pray, when you and I begin to seek him. And, and for some of us, we need to stand up in this moment and begin to do the things that he's already given us to do, begin to operate in the dreams that he's given us. But let me just ask this question. What do you think the rest of the journey was like? What do you think the rest of the journey, after everything had been calmed, everything had been come back to, okay, all right, now we can keep sailing. What do you think it was like? See, I tend to read these stories, and I think they're before and after. I, I, even next week's story, we'll have a little bit of this. And the, the journey to this moment where the storm hits, and then the journey after the storm to the other side. There, there, we see at the beginning of the next chapter that they make it to the other side. And there's one verse between the peace be still, where is your faith, everything's good, and they made it to the other side. There's one verse, and it's the disciples who say, it says they were terrified, they were in fear. And they said, who is this man who, who even the wind and waves listen? Even the wind and waves obey. Here, here's what I think about this. I think... The rest of the journey was a journey of awe and wonder. I think it was a journey of fear and trembling. And that's not even a bad thing. It's a heavy thing. It's a big thing, but it's not a bad thing. Because what it means is I, I'm looking at him. I'm not looking at the waves. I'm looking at him. I'm not looking at the storm. I, I mean, something is different about who he is. What, what was the rest of the journey? What was the rest of the, the trip like? What did they do the rest of the... I, I can't... I'm just thinking, like, is it, they just keep looking back at Jesus like, what? And I'm just, I'm just want to give you some hope here. I believe on the other side of this, we're going to look back and go, man, what did, what did God do in me? What did God do in us? What did God do in the church? What did God do around the world in these moments of great difficulty? That he was able to continue the journey. We were able to continue to move forward. We were able to continue to love people, serve people, and fight this battle and not move back, but stand up in the resilience of faith and be able to bring heaven into earth in the darkest of moments and be able to look back at the back of the boat and go, okay, Jesus is different. I mean, people who trust him have hope and despair in the midst of despair. People who trust him have faith when everybody else is running in fear. People who trust him are living with love and vibrancy and hope and something strong about them, even when it should be shaky at best. Now, I wonder what the next, rest of the journey is going to look like for us, because I, I do believe that this moment might shake us, but I also believe this moment will solidify us. I believe that even though we will be shaken, that we will grow. I believe that even though we will be challenged, we will grow. That even in the moments of difficulty, even when the wind and waves show up, we will not cower, but we will stand and put our eyes upon Jesus and he will initiate our faith and then he will perfect our faith and we will not grow weary, but we will grow strong. And even in the admittance of the struggle, we will have strength because we know that in our weakness, his strength is made perfect and we will stand up in Christ Jesus and know that even in the storm, Jesus is with us. It's the promise he makes to his disciples. It's the promise God makes to his people that all along the journey, I will be with you. I want to read this verse to close out. And you may have already heard it. Psalm 107 verses 1 and then verse 28 and 29. The, the whole psalm is a chronicling of, of how God had shown up in the lives of people. Psalm 107 said, give, th give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Verse 28 and 29 says, Lord, help, they cried in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He calmed the storm to a whisper and stilled the waves. I want to pray for you right now. I want to pray that the waves would still and that the wind would, would be pulled down to the sound of a whisper, that we would begin to see peace be still because his word is peace. His word is peace is calm. His word is strength. His word is joy. His word 
is hope. Your faith will be initiated and perfected that even in the wind and waves, what will be revealed in us is that our confidence is in the Lord. What will be revealed in us is that our trust is in God. And what will be revealed in us is that we will not allow fear to take the place of faith. We will locate our faith and we will begin to stand up in who Christ is. Can I pray with you right now? Lord, I thank you so much that your word is true and we can trust you and that your word is peace. Your word is hope. Your word is life. And God, I pray that today people would know that you're present, that you're there, you're with them. God, I pray where fear has tried to step in, I pray that faith would be found again. And that as we look upon you, that you would initiate our faith, you'd perfect our faith. And that today we would put our confidence in you, no matter what kind of storm is around us. And God, I pray for those of us who, who are really struggling in, in this moment, I pray that you'd bring peace and that your word would bring stillness and a silence to their spirit and their soul. That in that they would have a strength that rises up because in their weakness, your strength is made perfect. For some of us today, right now, it's time to put our confidence in Jesus. And I want to invite you to do that. And as I pray, I would just encourage you. God, I'm going to trust in you. I can't trust in all these things. I'm going to trust in you. So let me pray. And as I pray, I want, to, I want to encourage you to put your trust in Him. Today's the day. Today's the day to put your confidence in Him. God, I pray that we would all put our confidence in You. We would trust in You. We would lean into You. We would know that You stand strong. And Lord, when the wind blows and the storm comes, our foundation is upon You. Our confidence, our trust is in You. And God, I pray that right now in this moment, as we surrender all of our life to who You are, that we put our confidence in You. You love us. You are for us. You are with us in this moment. And so, God, I pray that we'd strip off every weight that weighs us down and every sin that seems to trip us up. And, God, I pray that we would rely on you, trust in you, lean into you, put our confidence in you today. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you, church. I'll talk to you very soon. What a powerful day together, church. We're praying that the Holy Spirit showed you something new about yeah. Jesus today. And with that, if you decided to follow Jesus today, yep. we'd love to know and we'd love to walk this journey out with you. So please click the I Decided to Follow Jesus button on the screen. Yep. And then right now there will be a link popping up for the virtual lobby. Yeah. It's another Zoom. We love technology. So click on that, jump in there, chat with people, see their smiling faces. And then also if you want to meet Brandon and Meredith, we're a little biased on it, then we think they're great, but click, there's a separate link for their Zoom chat, so click in there and do that. We love you, church. See you this week at dinner parties. Woo! Love you.